Welcome back to Gameplay Classics. I'm your host, Rick Lemieux, and I'm excited to bring you another episode of Classic Gaming. And for this episode, I thought I'd go back to the first video game console that I got as a child. The Atari 2600. Okay, Atari. Let's see your best pitch. You're out, Rose! The Atari video computer system is 20 cartridges with 1,300 game variations you play on your own TV set. You can't keep me in here, Atari. Go tonight. Play it. There's no denying that the world's most popular video game console of the late 70s and early 80s is the Atari 2600 video computer system. The Atari 2600 was technically superior to the other game consoles when it was released. Consoles such as the Magnavox Odyssey and the Fairchild Channel F could not compete and Atari became the leader for home video games. The Atari 2600 was released in October 1977. At that time it was called the Atari VCS, which stood for Video Computer System. The console made popular interchangeable cartridges. This was an amazing leap forward for home video games. You could buy many different game cartridges and plug them into the same console for a different gaming experience. It was not the first console to do this, however. The Fairchild Channel F was released in August 1976. The Fairchild Channel F was destroyed by the Atari 2600, which offered gamers more variety and also had the marketing power of Warner Communications. To get the console released, Atari was sold to Warner Communications, which helped get the system in front of the consumer. Hit me, Atari! Sorry, Miss Channing. You gonna slam dunk me, Atari? The Atari video computer system is 20 cartridges with 1,300 game variations you play on your own TV set. Don't watch television tonight. Play it. The system was priced at $199, included two joysticks, and the game Combat. The Atari VCS was off and running. Later in the life cycle, the console was renamed the Atari 2600. The Atari 2600 was widely successful, and Atari was synonymous with video games in general. Competition came in 1980 with the Intellivision and in 1982 with the ColecoVision. Both of these consoles were graphically better systems. However, the Atari 2600 stayed at the top. Atari made it very difficult for anyone in the video game world. Anytime that there was a huge arcade hit, they would come in and buy the exclusive rights to the home port. This is one of the downfalls of the 2600. There were too many cartridges being produced and too many of them were lacking in gameplay and graphics. And this not only brought Atari down, but everyone else. This came to a crashing halt in 1983 and 1984 with the infamous video game crash. Atari managed to stay afloat with other consoles and computers, but they would never be able to get back on top. My favorite game for the Atari 2600 is Pitfall, which was released by Activision in 1982. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Well, Harry and I just grabbed the van, swung through the trees, and over the tar pits and found the jungle treasure. It was really neat. If you haven't met Pitfall Harry, you're missing the year's most incredible video game adventure. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 and in television. Since I met Pitfall Harry, no other man will do. Pitfall, designed by David Crane for Activision. Activision was formed by many ex-Atari programmers. They left Atari when they felt that the company was not treating them properly. Atari would make millions off the games that were being developed by these programmers, and they felt like they weren't being paid enough for their services. In my opinion, Activision became better at making Atari games than Atari was. Pitfall was designed by David Crane, who would go on to develop Pitfall 2, A Boy in His Blob, Night Trap, as well as several others. The gamer controls a character known as Harry through a jungle in his quest to find treasures. Along the way, he encounters numerous hazards, including tar pits, bottomless pits, water holes, rolling logs, rattlesnakes, scorpions, walls, fire, and crocodiles, and in certain places swinging on a vine to avoid them. Treasures include gold and silver bars, diamond rings, and money bags. This was my first game that felt like I was playing a quest. By today's standards, it's a very simplistic game, but back then it was amazing. Running around swinging on vines, jumping over logs, dodging scorpions, and jumping on alligators when they closed their mouths was quite the experience. In my opinion, this game was more fun when compared to other games on the Atari 2600. 
Pitfall was really something special and holds a well-deserved place in my heart as a true classic. Harry has seen updates since his debut. In Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns, a 1984 sequel to the original, Super Pitfall, a 1987 sequel on the NES, which was a remake of Pitfall 2. Pitfall, The Mayan Adventure, a 1994 sequel with releases on the Super NES, the Genesis, the 32X, the Sega CD, Windows, Jaguar, Game Boy Advance, and on the Virtual Console. Those games were followed by Pitfall 3D, Beyond the Jungle, a 1998 sequel on the PlayStation 1, and Pitfall, The Lost Expedition, a 2004 sequel which was released on the GameCube, PS2, Xbox, Game Boy Advance, Windows, and now on the Wii. Even though the original holds a special place in my heart, the game has not aged well in my opinion. I still had fun playing this game, but newer gamers would have a hard time getting past the graphics and sound. Older gamers would still have fun, and I encourage them to play through the game again, just to go back to a simpler time in video games. Back in 1982, this game would have received a 5 out of 5, but as of today, I give it a 3 out of 5. Thanks for watching, and keep playing the classics. Thank you.